Ladies and gentlemen, come to order. The first item on the agenda for the Budget and Finance Committee is RS 2012-245, sponsors McGuire and Barry, provides additional compensation for the Davidson County Criminal Court Clerk in an amount equal to 10% of his base compens compensation pursuant to state law. May I have a motion, please? I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We all actually, uh, if I can get hands, please. Um, those who are in favor of RS 2012-245, please raise your hand. And all those opposed? Two. Motion passes 10 4, 2 against, 1 abstaining. We're now at bills on third reading. Um, what we uh, propose to do would be to first talk about, um, well, we'll talk about all of the budget related uh, legislation at first. Um, I will quickly discuss my substitute budget ordinance. Um, and then we will also, and then I will have John go through and discuss um, the proposed amendments, and then um, we will vote on on my substitute, and then discuss every uh, amendment thereafter. So, um, without further ado, my substitute amendment, as um, you may have already heard, or if not, uh, John Cooper put together an analysis that should be. Um, on your desk. If you don't have one of those, please let Elise know and we can get you one of those. Um, it essentially would keep the tax levy at 53 cents, um, but I have identified $8.6 million in budget reductions that could be made. And um, rather than reduce the levy by that amount, uh, my proposal would be to take the $8.6 million and put it into reserves. Um, Four million one fifty nine seven hundred of it would go towards the the GSD debt service fund. Three point five million, which is also the amount of the reduction that I proposed for the Metro Schools budget, would go into the Metro Schools debt service fund, and an additional nine hundred forty thousand three hundred dollars would go into the general fund reserve. Um, the analysis pretty clearly denotes what reductions I have identified. Um, so hopefully there there is no question there. Um, and uh, right, the uh, the other language that has been added is to um, to add that the sheriff's office would be the recipient of the uh, lease agreement that we pursued, or excuse me, that we um, passed. I guess it was maybe at our last uh, meeting, BL 2012-145, that. Um, approve that lease agreement, the sheriff would collect the revenue from that lease. Um, I believe the sheriff in the mayor's budget had been identified at a, for a $200,000 cut. Um, this would go towards making up the difference um, of that cut. Um, other than that, um, I think the analysis does a, a very great job of outlining what my substitute would propose. So, um, John, if you would, please... Um, you can discuss the amendments at this time. Okay. We have seven amendments that are eligible or that have been proposed for consideration by the committee. Typically, we go through these and just give an explanation of all of them, and then we'll go back and, and have motions and discuss them individually. But just as an overview of what the seven proposals would do, the first amendment is sponsored by Councilman Duvall, and it's basically a zero tax increase budget it would cut $100 million in spending without touching uh, police and fire, which with the majority of that, um, almost 30 million coming each from schools and the hospital authority with an additional 4.9 million from MTA. It would also eliminate all discretionary funding in the spending, such as all arts funding and all funding for various nonprofit organizations and um, 
community initiatives. Uh, the second amendment is sponsored by Councilman Tigard. Uh, this is basically a 12 and a half cent levy reduction amendment. It would cut uh, approximately $23 million from the budget. Um, to get to those cuts, it, it would incorporate most of the reductions that the chair has identified in his substitute budget, except that it would uh, restore the, the um, cuts to police, planning, public works, parks, health department, and public library. Uh, the largest savings um, that, that make up the bulk of this amendment is the elimination of the $16.3 million pay plan for Metro employees, uh, which was providing the 4% raise for most employees and then 2% raise for upper level management or upper, upper positions. Uh, in lieu of that pay plan, uh, it would add back in approximately $5.4 million to be used as a um, bonus for employees based upon county of residency. This would be pursuant to a formula the Civil Service Commission came up with and submitted to council for approval. Um, but it would be uh, tied or the amount of the bonus would be based upon whether you reside inside Davidson County or out. The third amendment is a um, six cent tax levy reduction amendment. It would cut 11.4 million. This is sponsored by Councilman Bedney. Uh, the amendment incorporates all of the chair's proposed reductions, uh, but would also reduce Metro schools by another 2.9 million for a total schools reduction of $6,406,900. Uh, it would also add back in the cuts to the police and public works department. The fourth amendment is sponsored by Councilman Claiborne. Uh, this does not adjust the tax levy or would not result in an adjustment to the tax levy, but it would cut an additional $1 million in spending to be put into reserves. This would be 500,000 from the school's budget, 250,000 from MTA, and 250,000 from the hospital authority subsidy. That would amount to approximately a five cent um, equivalent of the tax levy. The fifth amendment is sponsored by Councilman Glover. It simply takes the reductions that the chair identified in his substitute and reduces the tax levy by four and a half cents. So it, it, instead of the 8.6 million going into reserves, that 8.6 million would just be taken from the tax levy. Amendment number six, sponsored by Councilman Tigard, would shift $1,058,800 from the hospital authority and $85,400 from the Human Relations Commission to the public library to open all branch libraries on Friday. Uh, the final amendment would shift $28,000 from the Partnership 2020 appropriation to the Election Commission for early voting sites in Bellevue and Green Hills. Okay, thank you, John. Um, I would at this time entertain a motion on um, the substitute so bill. I have a second, a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Um, now um, on you want to do the first the amendments? Um, now on the first amendment, which uh, was sponsored by Councilman Duvall, is there a motion? I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Councilman Stein? We have a letter. I assume there is a letter. He does uh, have a letter asking for his approval of, of his amendment, asking for approval of his amendment. This essentially guts metro government as we know it and I would stand in opposition to this. Thank you, Councilman Stein. Any further discussion? Seeing none on the motion to approve, all those in favor please say aye. Opposed no. no. We'll need a roll call vote. Uh, all those in favor please raise your hand. Uh, in, in favor. favor. <laughs> 
two, two. Now all those opposed, please raise your hand. Thirteen, two, four, thirteen against. With, uh, there was two in favor, thirteen against. Motion fails. Call vote. We did a roll call vote. Can we identify who those votes are for the record? Well, it, it, it's not actually, a, there's no such thing as a roll call vote in committee. It's just yeah. a, a show of hands. Um, the, the two that were in favor were Tigard and Bennett. Um, those opposed, McGuire, Barry, Baker, Davis, Garrett, Hunt, Jernigan, Langster, Maynard, Matthews, Stein, Tigard, and Westerholm, and I could not see Mr. Mitchell's no, hand. I'm sorry, Tiger was in favor. Yeah, I counted him. Yeah, 2 4, 13 against. Okay. Motion for approval fails. Um, amendment 2, sponsored by Councilman Tigard. May I have a motion, please? Have a motion. Is there a second? A motion and a second. Discussion. Councilman Tiger. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, obviously, based on the calls and emails that we've gotten, there are a lot of people in this county that are still suffering. And I want to commend you for the process and uh, especially uh, a couple of the items that you included. I think it was a very prudent thing to remove municipal auditorium, farmer's market, um, and what else? Fairgrounds. Fairgrounds, thank you. Um, and, and put them on record that uh, those boards and commissions that oversee those entities, that we are serious and it's not just a given that we'll keep writing checks uh, for those entities. So I, I really thank you for doing that. It makes no sense to me, though, in a time of depression, recession, citizen suffering, and struggling to make ends meet, our seniors on fixed income, though, that we would take money and put it in reserve for a future year. So I brought my prop with me. If that is not a red flag for us that we still have problems in this, in this government that we have got to get under control and take seriously, we're raising taxes $100 million on our citizens. And then because of concerns in the future, we're going to withhold those citizens' money and put it in a reserve fund for next year and future years when we should be looking everything that this body is doing from this point on should be a wake-up call is this a necessity is it being done the right way as i talked to several departments today basically as mr cooper described this amendment first of all does not obligate us for 16 point, John, 16.2, 16.3 million dollars of bonuses for employees year after year after year. Now, I respect our employees. They work hard. But at this time, when so many of our citizens don't have a job, to go ahead and make that commitment for $16.3 million for next year is it, just something I, I, I could not do. So as John described, there is a bonus system in that every employee below a certain non-management level would be rewarded for their hard work and thanked and we could do this again next year and again if the funds are available. And guess what? There is a way based on averaging the property tax rates in Davidson County, which are obviously higher than the surrounding counties. 
if you take the six surrounding counties and average those rates, they're 76% of what our citizens in Davidson County are paying. So it would seem wise to me to reward those citizens who choose to live and work and support initiatives in this county at a higher level than those that choose to live elsewhere. I respect the right of anybody wanting to live where they want to. But to cross the county line and then say that I'm for this or against that is a problem. Now that's the first part. The second part, there, there's one person in this room that I turned and asked some questions to and other than Chris Henson and, and maybe a few other folks on Bransford Avenue, but we have the fortunate ability sitting among us to have the former chair of the school board's budget and finance committee. Someone who took his job so seriously, he knew line item by line item where the issues were, where the savings were, where the problems were. And so I asked Steve Glover, help me identify those areas in this budget that we could encourage our school board and administration to, to run a leaner, cleaner, better organization that with one goal, do not touch any teacher or any program that affects classroom performance. And if there's anyone in this room whose opinion I respect, it would be Steve Glover's. He, is, he served over there, he studied it, he knew it, and, they, and his colleagues on that board understood enough to appoint him as the leader on financial matters. So he advised me that here were some additional things, and we can, we'll talk about it tomorrow or I'll ask Steve to talk about it tomorrow. He can talk about it tonight if he cares to. Um, where we could show the school board some guidance and leadership that we're just not going to continue writing this blank check because you want to do things a different way. We treasure, we respect our teachers, and, and we want our students to have the best education opportunities that they can, but not at the expense of our suffering taxpayers. The third element of this amendment, restore some of the cuts that the, the budget and finance chair felt impaled uh, to make because, uh, you know, to get to that magic number. But as we heard from Mr. Bernhardt, the $75,000 from planning, that just means that we will have less community outreach on the, developing the plan of Nashville. Now, if anything should be done, we should have more input from our citizens. I get a call from the health department saying, taking the $100,000, you know, we've already identified that we're having trouble meeting all of our obligations in animal control. We don't know where this cut may come. Um, we brag here that we're truly interested in police and fire. But this budget, this substitute, takes away some of the funds that our police department needed. We've all talked about expanding our greenways and the quality of life that our parks and community centers. But we ask them, once you've come up with the budget here and, and you've pared it down, you've privatized our softball fields, but guess what? We're going to take $100,000 away because we just need it for next year. We did the same for public works. Each and every one of us have talked about and supported putting another grass cutting crew out there and a horticulturalist to, to advise on the plants and to, to do it the right way. But guess what, public works, for your hard work and for what you've done, we're gonna take 100,000 away from you. And the final thing I'm not sure John mentioned that is not included in the chair's reductions um, is Partnership 2020. Now, if there was any council member that's sitting in this body that has ever been identified as more pro-business in this room, I'm guilty. But when the surrounding counties, all six of them, can only find out of their tight budgets 
$100,000 to put to Partnership 2020, and they get the benefit of the Nissan and the other corporations. Now, certainly Davidson County gets the majority of jobs, but for us to put 300,000, I'm not sure we're getting three quarters of the benefit. So I went ahead to initiate the discussion and ask John to include as part of this amendment, a $100,000 reduction to partnership 2020. I think that their members will step up to the plate and, and certainly any money we pour, put toward business and economic development and recruiting is important. And I don't want to be foolish on these cuts, but you know, this was sort of a symbolic statement that six counties surrounding us, including the wealthiest county in the state in Williamson, is only going to combine for 100000 and the citizens of Davidson County are going to put three in. Once again, just didn't make sense for me. So, uh, John, this amendment would reduce the tax levy down from the 53 to our citizens into the... It would take it down between 12 and a half and 13 cents. It depends on how you calculate a USD penny, and so the finance department's been working on that today. So in the roughly 41 cent range, so it's a 25% reduction in the, the obligation that we're going to ask our citizens to pay. And we're going to pledge to, starting today, to begin streamlining and making metro government more efficient and everything that we should do and this body should do from this day forward should have that one singular goal in mind. But a 25% reduction in taxes to our citizens is significant in this economy. I apologize to those that are watching. I wish it could be greater. It needs to be greater. Uh, we're not over the hump yet. But in order to keep this city moving forward and reaching our priorities of schools, public safety, this amendment still fulfills those goals in my personal opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, as, the, uh, as the sponsor of the substitute, I just w did want to address a couple points that Councilman Tiger mentioned first. I appreciate your willingness to look at this from all angles, um, but you mentioned a couple specific points, and so I wanted to address them as they relate to my substitute. Um, the first being that um, in terms of putting the money away for reserves, um, I guess I would say I certainly see a red flag as well, but I see a red flag for a different reason because I think that we could be potentially heading into another fiscal year that is difficult. and my intention with putting this money away into reserves is to first make it so that we don't have to come back here again and ask for another property tax increase. I know that's not what any of us want. But more importantly, I think that putting this money in reserves could go a long way to increasing our, um, our bond rating with the rating agencies. What, are that, what that, of course, will do will allow us to borrow more capital for less money. And that, in turn, is going to benefit our citizens in many different ways. But certainly, we can continue to do the long-term projects that we not only want to do and need to do. So um, that is, is, uh, is two of the main points that are driving my desire to put this money into reserves. Um, the cut from planning for the community plan was mentioned, $75,000. I think that can be justified because it's going to take a while to get the community plan process ramped up. And in my opinion, we didn't need to make the entire expenditure this, this fiscal year, but we can look to next fiscal year to hopefully put in the 75,000 that, that is being cut in my substitute. Um, the councilman also mentioned the parks, the $100,000. Uh, I, I certainly would agree with the notion that um, we need to continue to fund parks to the best that we can. We have a fantastic parks director. We have a pan fantastic park staff. We have a fantastic park system. Um, that 100,000 is off of an, a requested increase of 400,000. So parks will still be receiving 300,000 uh, additional dollars off of my, uh, uh, including in my substitute budget. Next was the $100,000 for public works. Again, I could not be more in agreement with Councilman Tigert on 
how wonderful Public Works is and all the wonderful things that they do for our city. Um, this was specifically targeted from right-of-way maintenance dollars. Um, my feeling is that not only were, was enough money left uh, in that um, right-of-way maintenance funding to, to adequately get the job done, but we also know that we rely on people like the Sheriff's Department to ha help handle those services that they've done in years past, and I know that going forward they can continue to do that, especially now that in my budget I've added in that they're getting the lease revenues to offset any kind of cut under the mayor's proposed budget. Um, lastly, I wanted to also mention the cut to police. Um, that, um, uh, again, I, I don't think you could find someone who is more supportive of our police force um, as I am and want to be in this budget, the $200,000 is identified as overtime pay for officers working special events such as Titans games. Um, to me, in this budget, that was a cut that could be justified. And so uh, it doesn't take away from the officers patrolling our streets from equipment um, that we need to make our pre police force run as best as they possibly could. So. Um, that being said, I did just want to address uh, some of the specific cuts that were mentioned by Councilman Tigert. So, um, continue discussion, Councilman Stein. Well, Mr. Chair, you were very eloquent and you didn't even get to the core of why I think this is not a very good idea. And that is that no matter how you cut it and how we take a look at what we do as our, with our city, the key to what happens in this community and this government are the people that work for our government. And during the flood, when the, we, the water department was fighting to save our water supply and working down here on, this, on the levee, nobody asked where they lived. And when our police and fire were working overtime and public works were doing all that work, nobody said, what county do you live in? And if you don't live in Davidson County, you don't have to do quite as much as you have to do if you live outside of Davidson County. And these, this budget provides 4%. The last time there was a pay raise was five years ago. There's been a bonus in between, one-time bonus. It comes out to less than 1% for year for our greatest asset in this government, and I would argue in this community. So there's no way in the world that you can value the programs that we are doing as a government and not value the people that are doing it. Because all of us would admit over the last few years, with the amount that we have been cutting from these departments, these folks are all doing a lot more with a lot less. And I think that's undeniable. So for me, the, the, the basic core of what we're doing here is providing a little bit more compensation, not keeping up with cost of living, to our Metro employees. And I would argue to you that that is a crucial part of what we're about in this discussion. Um, and anything to backtrack from that, I think is a step in the wrong direction for this government. Councilman Dominey. Thank you, I've got a couple of things to, um, comments. Primarily, I support uh, Amendment 2. Uh, Number one, it, it does honor the wishes of the residents that we've had overwhelming responses from asking us not to raise their taxes and to rein in spending. It is a responsible budget. But there's a couple of things, that, that particular contention. On the 6th of June, we, I sat here in this meeting for some time with the school board and I asked some questions. They justified the large increase, $48 million increase with the school system, talking about how they were gonna have improvements in performance, but they wouldn't justify and tell us what they would call success at that level. And as I sit here today, or almost two full weeks later, I still don't have a response to the questions that were asked in your committee, count and Chairman. Um, now, that's a disrespect to you and the committee and to this council. I've not got any response whatsoever from the school system. Now, I'm a supporter of the school system. My wife is a Metro school teacher, has been for over 20 years. I have three children in the metro school system and we need, to, we need to take care of our teachers, but we need to make sure it goes to our teachers and to the classroom. And we need to do it responsibly. And we as a council have the utmost responsibility to do everything within our power to balance this budget so we protect the interest of our employees, but also the interest of those constituents that elected us to this body. This budget does that in a way that protects the essential services, 
It protects the classroom based on the input of a former chair, budget chair of the school board that knows what he's talking about with the school system. We can do that, meet the needs of our constituents as well as the city, but it doesn't tie our hands and commit us to $16 million next year and the year after that and the year after that and the re required increases that go along with that. We have a difficult time coming over the next year or so. We're not out of the woods yet with the economy. And the, the increase we have, while you, I understand your, and appreciate your desire not to have to come back and ask for a tax increase, with the reassessment coming next year and the current values of property all across this city being down 10, 20, and 30 percent from what the assessed values were in 2009, we may face a property tax increase without any input from us because state law will require it. And we need to do our very best to make sure we haven't put ourselves into a, a mandated uh, budget because of laws regarding the school performance and the, the, the continuation of performance in that, in that category that we have to fund and we make it more difficult for us to balance our budgets next year in that situation where we re, 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 re assess property and have to re increase property to balance that budget by state law. I support it. We need to do something. This is a reasonable approach somewhere between the full 53 cents and the zero tax increase budget, and it's the best we can do to honor all of our residents and our employees, because what I don't want to see happen is our employees get a pay raise and we take it all away from them in tax increases, because I've seen that happen. My wife is a school teacher being one of those that she got a pay raise of $300 an increase in insurance of $325, and our, and our escrow account went up $600. And that's not moving forward, folks. I'm not a professional accountant, but I can tell you that wasn't an advancement. And we want to make sure we've balanced this. Um, I've got a quote real briefly from George Washington. It says, government is not reason. It is not eloquent. It is a force. Like fire, it is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. We have a responsibility to control fire. Fire is a beneficial thing if it's controlled. It's a terrible thing if it's not. And we've got to control our spending, and this budget does it. And I ask you to support it. Thanks. Councilman Maynard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question for Mr. Cooper, or, or the finance director. For Mr. Tiger's Second Amendment, what would result if we pass this, if the amount of money in the pocket of a resident with the average appraised home if we did a pass this, what would it be? Thirteen dollars, ten dollars. What, what would be the amount that they would save that the, that the resident would receive in their pocket as a result of passing this amendment? Just doing it in my head, it would be roughly twelve dollars a month on a three hundred thousand dollar house. Twelve dollars USD. Okay, thank you. My second point, and I want to talk about, is. You know, we keep hearing about that we've got someone in the room who got elected in 2011 who's used to serve on a school board, which is fine. And in the role of that, you know, when they looked at the budget, they passed the budget as a board. And then they had the budget submitted to the council to vote on based on the recommendation uh, that they passed. We have received the same thing from the school board as to what their budget would be. And now the person that I trust is our chair of our budget and finance, who has looked at the budget, found $3 million in savings, has decided that he was offering a substitute budget. We're not in a school board. This is the council. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to support our chair here in looking at the $3.3 million of the savings that he has identified for uh, our school system. Finally, I want to say about our workers, the Metro employees, it's not just about the Metro employees, it's about our says of citizens. Specifically, when I talk to our citizens, no one says, I want a property tax increase. But when I talk about the services that would be cut, the services that would be diminished, then when you talk to our residents, they all say the same thing. And that is they do not want to have our city move backwards. They want to make sure that we have the services that we need to make sure that Nashville is a city that we really cherish with the service that they provide. And it's very, very simple. Our city is only as good as the employees that work for us. Our city is only as good as the employees who provide the services that we deliver. And so when we have our, our Metro employees who have sacrificed over the last five years and have done more with little and made brick without you know, straw, 
and then say to them, okay, we're going to cut you again 4%, and not give you the 4% raise, I think that we are doing a disservice to them, which means we do a disservice to our city, which means we do a disservice to our citizens. And so I disagree with the councilman who spoke that, you know, that this is just something of a bonus. It's not a bonus. These are working families. This is not a bonus. They've gone without a pay raise. And so I hope that we will support Councilman McGuire's budget, substitute budget, and that we will vote no on Amendment 2. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman. And uh, the difference on the median home is $3 a month um, between Councilman Tigard's proposal and what, uh, and what my proposed tax rate would be. Um, any other discussion? Okay, seeing none on the amendment, all those in favor, and I also would remind that only members of the Budget and Finance Committee should be voting on this amendment. Um, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. no. If we could have a show of hands, please. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment, thank you. Opposed. Two, four, 14 against. Two in favor, 14 against. <coughs> Motion fails. Um, amendment three offered by Councilman Bednay would cut six cents from the tax increase. I do have uh, a letter from Councilman Bednay, um, so may I have a motion, please? I have a motion and a second. Discussion on Councilman Bednay's amendment. Uh, certainly, if the amendment would call for um, a six cent reduction from the tax levy. Um, yeah, it would incorporate your reductions and cut another 1.5 million, uh, 1.5 cents primarily from schools. Be a 1.9 million additional reduction to schools. Yes, sir. 2.9 million, I'm sorry. Back. No, we no, put it in no. So it would be the three and a half identified in the substitute budget for schools plus another 2.9 reduction the to schools. Four, yeah, four and a half. Right. Yeah. Um, any discussion? Councilman Tiger? I'm going to say one more thing about putting it in reserves for next year versus putting it back in the pocket of our citizens. It would seem to me that if we wanted to create reserves for next year, we should have proposed a budget greater than 53 cents and included a reserve fund. Can somebody tell me why that would not have been a, a, a reasonable approach? I can tell you what my reasoning was, okay. and it was that um, we were already asking for a substantial increase, and we had already heard from many in the public saying um, not to propose an increase, and I thought the most fiscally responsible thing to do would not be to increase it even more with the goal of establishing reserves, but to locate cuts that we can do without that are already in the mayor's proposed budget not raising the levy any higher. So Mr. Cooper, can you calculate raising the levy any higher what a one cent increase would mean for these same citizens that Councilman Maynard just described a month? Help me out with if the you, numbers. If you did a, um, a, one, a one to make cent. it to 469 or to one cent. Yeah, one cent. To the median home. If it was three dollars or I've got it. cents, then that would be <laughs> Fifty cents, forty cents. Um, it it'd be somewhere in the neighborhood of less than a dollar. Would be it would be less than a dollar, probably less than fifty cents. All right, I mean, I, I'm just you know splitting hairs here. We're so worried about three dollars a month helping our citizens. Now we're worried about a dollar more hurting our citizens. It just seems like we're using a, a double standard on our argument, depending on which side of, that we are. Any further discussion? 
Seeing none, um, all of those in favor of this amendment, would you please raise your hand? One, two. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Two, four, 13 against, and one not voting. Okay. Two, four, 13 against, one not voting. Next, uh, amendment number four, sponsored by Councilman Claiborne. This would cut an additional million dollars um, to the 8.6 that I have identified in my substitute budget, uh, but also put this million dollars to go towards reserves. Uh, may uh, I have a motion, please, on the amendment? I move. have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Councilman Claiborne. Councilman Claiborne, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, when uh, I saw the uh, chair's uh, substitute budget last uh, Friday about 1.30 and looked at it, my first reaction to it was, um, I'm not sure about that and uh, spent a lot of time on Friday afternoon uh, trying to think through uh, the reasoning behind what he had proposed. Uh, during that period of time and through Saturday, um, had discussion with Mr. Cooper about a couple of questions I had. And as an aside, I'd just like to say a, a special thanks to Mr. Cooper for making himself available to many of us this weekend. Uh, giving us the uh, benefit of his uh, his wisdom, knowledge, uh, background, whatever. But uh, Ms. I, I really appreciate, Mr. Cooper, you giving up your weekend uh, to communicate with us. The more I thought about uh, the purpose of the chair's uh, uh, purpose to put some money into the reserve for future years, reflected on a chart that Mr. Riebling gave us uh, last year and showed um, a, uh, basically a bar graph with the uh, increasing levels of debt that we're going to encounter through about 2015, 2016 before things level off. And then it stands steady for a while, uh, three or four years, and then begins to decline into the 20s. So it began to be, become more sensible to me that if we have an opportunity to kind of begin to plan for that at this point in time when we're considering uh, this increase, that that was the prudent thing to do. Uh, kind of equate that to paying down the mortgage. If you've got some extra money that you're going to be coming into, then you put it towards something that you, you know that you're going to be obligated to at some point in time. And uh, in that process, uh, it, uh, it is beneficial. So uh, in looking at the three probably largest areas that are in our budget, it's the, um, the school system. And so I'm proposing that we take another uh, 500,000 from them and make their total uh, reduction four. That still leaves them enough money to uh, fund pay increase for beginning teachers if they desire to, maybe not at $5,000. But if we pay uh, those new teachers $3,500, that still puts us in third place in the state. It actually puts us a few hundred dollars ahead of Bristol City Schools, which is currently number three. So um, they still have enough to do that with if they desire to do that. They may not be able to fund some of the other discretionary things that they wanted to do. Uh, by taking another uh, 250 away from MTA, I think that's a reasonable thing. When I looked at their budget and saw that they were requesting 100 new employees, I raised the question about that. That that seemed completely out of uh, balance with the rest of uh, the metro departments that are cutting uh, employees or are cutting in certain areas. So an additional 250 from MTA certainly seems reasonable. And then when I looked at the fact that we're taking the subsidies away from the fair, from the auditorium, and from the farmer's market, then it, it didn't seem fair to me that the hospital authority should not have some skin in the game. $250,000 is a token amount to say to the hospital authority that we are serious about 
the deficit you have and the subsidy that we are uh, providing you to, to operate. And so with that total of a million dollars, uh, that brings the amount to a nickel or just slightly over a nickel, I guess, that goes into that uh, reserve fund going forward toward our uh, debt obligations. So I think that's a reasonable thing. Uh, it's not uh, something that is extreme, and I hope those of you as members of the body uh, will, uh, will approve. Thank you, Councilman Claiborne. Any further discussion? Seeing none, would all those in favor of Councilman Claiborne's amendment please raise your hand? Would all those opposed please raise your hand? Two, four, 14 against. Two, four, 14 against. Next is amendment number five, sponsored by Councilman Glover, would cut $8.6 million from uh, the proposed budget and reduce the levy by four and a half cents. Councilman Glover, you're recognized. My discussion on this is very simple. Um, I don't think that we can manage the people's money better than they can. If we've identified cuts that we can make in this budget, then we should do that. I think this is a beginning point. I think we in government need to learn how to start reducing what we're asking taxpayers for. And so therefore, uh, I took, with respect to, to the chair, I took what you recommended and I said, you know what? I can't manage your money better than you do. And that's where I came up and, and I said, let's let them keep that. And even if it's only four and a half cents, it's still their money. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman. We actually need a motion. Uh, and I'm sorry, I do need a motion on this amendment. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. All those opposed, please raise your hand. Two, four, 12 against, and two not voting. Two, four, 12 against, two not voting. Next is Amendment 6, sponsored by Councilman Tigard. We'd move $1,144,200 from Hospitals and Human Relations Commission to the li library to open branches on Fridays. May I have a motion, please? A motion, is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Councilman Tigard? Seemed like I saw a slogan that a, a great city needs a great library, and, and we have great libraries, but it makes no sense to me that we haven't, even in a time of raising $100 million, figured out a way for our seniors and our kids to keep our libraries open on Friday. Councilman Claiborne just mentioned about the hospital authority. And I hate when I walked in the door, this was made out to be a racial issue because it's not. We have a business model that is a drain on taxpayers that we need to start having a serious discussion about. We have an unfilled position at the Human Relations Commission. The department is functioning and I simply propose not to fill that position and that as I came over, I heard one of our constitutional officers talk about if your community doesn't have summer reading program for our kids, they need to start one. If your libraries aren't available to our students, they lose more learning during the summer if they don't read than if they do read. If we don't keep our libraries open, to our families, to our students, and to the seniors who need that access. All of us probably have our computers. We've, we've got access, but believe it or not, there's some folks in our community that don't. So I think we need to start having the tough discussions, and the purpose of this amendment is to begin that discussion. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Maynard. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And for anybody wondering whether I'm the one that brought up the race issue, it was not me. But I want to address what Mr. Tiger said. When you make cuts, and the only two proposed cuts are to the Hospital Authority and the Human Relations Commission, I think that question needs to be raised. I, first of all, with our children, our senior citizens, if you can't see, you can't read unless you are dealing with, um, you know, the way I look at it is I'm, it's, it's, I'm so passionate about health care because health care is the second most important thing to me other than spirituality. Cutting a million dollars from the hospital authority, and I, I know that somebody's here from the hospital authority, would in essence shut it down. I mean, we would literally probably have to shut General Hospital down if there was another million dollar cut. And so if the people who are going to General Hospital cannot receive health care, then they probably won't be able to go to the library to read or do whatever they're doing. If their children don't have access to health care, regardless of their ability to pay, to me the, most, the, the top priority is to make sure we have libraries and we have hospitals in the hospital, but to shut down the hospital so we can open up on Fridays the library, to me is just, is just misguided. And so I hope that we will vote this thing down. As to the Human Relations Commission, they have more work that they need to do because we have given them more responsibility and yet they need this third position because with more responsibility means they, mean they need the third position filled and not cut. So they in, in turn can provide the services necessary to protect not only minorities, but women and others who are here in our city where unfortunately we still have problems with gender, we still have problems with race, we still have problems with immigration. And so the Human Relations Commission is still very effective and very, very deserving of the support that this Metro Council provides it. So I hope that you will vote no on Amendment 6. Thanks. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Anthony Davis. Thank you, Chair. Just briefly, uh I agree with most of what you said there. I think I think the process just should have been maybe, you know, we had this on the wish list. I, I'm a big supporter of libraries as well. And uh, I think Councilman Tiger's onto a good idea of getting libraries open on Saturday, but we can't just rob Peter to pay Paul and take money from uh, folks that need health care. So I'm recommending disapproval as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Further discussion on this amendment? Seeing none, would all those in favor of the amendment please raise your hand? All those opposed? One, four, 12 against, and I guess three not voting. One in favor, 12 against, three not voting. Three not voting. Three not voting. The final amendment, amendment number seven, offered by Councilman Mitchell, would cut 28000 from Partnership 2020 to go towards the Election Commission for early voting sites. May I have a motion, please? I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Councilman Mitchell? I think a lot of the uh, discussion we've been having here today is relates back to the school board, the school board budget, you know, better I, I don't you know more more intensive looks at the school board budget well this year we have a school board race races in five of the nine school board districts one being out in the western part of davidson county in the bellevue area is part of that well there's not an early voting site uh, i think ballot access uh, and consistency in early voting sites should be something. And, it, you know, we're talking about $28,000 here to give the people of the western part of this county a say-so. In the millions of dollars in this budget, we're all been discussing here today. Uh, you know, we want the citizens to have a voice, a say, but you know, sometimes we have an early voting site, sometimes we don't. You know, there's no consistency whatsoever, and I think the foundation of our democracy is the ballot access and not giving those folks the chance to vote in this important election, which affects the budget that then comes to us to approve 
you know, is a problem. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, everyone's been saying they want a better look at the school board budget. Will you start with more participation in elections for your school board member? And some of the lowest turnout ever is in school board races. So if you if you want to vote against this, then let's don't complain when it comes back to us next year and you say, well, you know, if they would only do this, this, and this in the school board. Let's get more involved to have more people participating in electing our school board members. With that said, I move the amendment. Thank you, Councilman. Any uh, further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, would all those in favor of the amendment please raise your hand? All those opposed, please raise your hand. Three, four, twelve against, one not voting. Three, four, twelve against, one not voting. That concludes all of the amendments um, to the substitute. Councilman Garrett, do you wish to be recognized? Mr. Chairman, are we on the substitute now? Yes, yes sir. Mr. Chairman, I've just got a couple of things that, that I'd just like to say. Since I'm referred to as Methuselah up here sometimes, having been here to some extent, I would like to remind the council members that people who sit in your desk years ago when the municipal auditorium was uh, financed, there was a parking garage and some of you heard me talk about this before i brought it up in 83 and got chastised for doing it because old council members the auditorium made money when the parking garage was next door which is where the mta uh, building is now those individuals who sit in your desk at that time passed that it funded itself it actually made money it was this council the same other individuals who have sat in these chairs who took those revenues away from this auditorium uh, just to, for those that have just come on board just realizing that that building down there while it operates in a deficit it did not and those individuals who were sitting in your desk at that time that's the reason it was passed and it, and it funded itself we this council took the funds away from them some years ago the only other item, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to direct this. Uh, your idea about putting monies aside for the, uh, for the, the debt, debt screw that's coming up is innovative. And I, I, I commend you for doing that. That is really something that, that uh, other me members here should realize uh, what he's done. Any person that's here, and all of us five at-large people who ran and were here four years ago, there was a chart that was put before us when we voted for restructuring the debt. We knew, and for those of you that are new, if you didn't know it, some people would say, well, you ought to know it. You ought to have known it. In the years 2012 and 2013, there were going to be over $30 million in new dollars that were going to have to be put into the debt service. That's right off the top. Next year, we're looking at a little over $30 million. I think it, it's going to be coming out of growth or wherever it comes from. That money's got to be come right off the top for debt structure. Everybody here knew it. I certainly knew it. Uh, the chairman has given this council and the administration a leg up uh, on what's going to happen next year. Uh, for looking at that, where that debt structure comes from. The next year in 2014, it's a little over, it's, it's, it drops down, but it's still over $10 million in new dollars. That's $70 million in new dollars that we, everybody here who was here four years ago or two years ago when we did this, we all knew was going to be coming. If you were here, you knew it. There was a flow chart. The charts that come at you, look, it showed everyone of us exactly what that is. The chairman has actually taken something and has done something that this council should have known was going to happen. Some of us did know it was going to happen. I commend you for, for, for at least giving us a head start. And, uh, and I will say another thing. It is really important for this council and this committee to support the chairman of the Budget Finance Committee, whether it be this year, last year, or the years that are coming up. Uh, this chairman has, has uh, demonstrated that he's got ideas that uh, even the administration didn't come up with, but you've put us in a position to have us next year and the next year be able to hopefully uh, fund the budget without even thinking about a tax increase for uh, the rest of this administration. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Garrett. We're now on um, 
the bill as substituted. Further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Thank you very much to the committee for your support. Um, we are now at BL 2012-155, sponsors McGuire, adopts the property tax levy for fiscal year 2012-2013. May I have a motion, please? I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion. Do I need a... Well, let's do a, um, a vote by hands. All those in favor of BL 2012-155, please raise your hand. All those opposed? I'm sorry, may we see the uh, in favor? Uh, do you the see opposed? opposed? The opposed again. Excuse me. All those opposed? It's just Councilman Mitchell. That's 13 for one against and two not voting. 13 for one against, two not voting. Motion is approved. RS 2012-273, sponsors McGuire. We can actually take 273, 274, and 275 together. Um, RS 2012-273 approves an amendment to the pay plan for general employees of the Metro government. Uh, 274 approves an amendment to the pay plan for employees of the Metropolitan Government Fire and Police Departments. Uh, 275 approves an amendment to the pay plan, play plan, excuse me, pay plan for employees of the Met Metropolitan Government Board of Health. Uh, may I have a motion, please? Have a motion and a second. Um, discussion? Okay. Councilman Tigert, I believe you have amendments to these that would coincide with your amendment should you offer it tomorrow night. Is that? Yes. Do you want to offer them today you... or just wait till tomorrow night? Okay, we'll wait till tomorrow evening for those. Um, any further discussion on these? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-276, sponsors McGuire, de determines to issue $297,660,000 in GSD general obligation bonds to provide funding for various projects contained in the mayor's 2012-2013 capital spending plan. May I have a motion, please? I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Councilman Tigert? The finance director has talked about how we issue commercial paper for the short-term financing of, of these uh, projects, and then as they come online and finish up, at one point we issue uh, uh, the, the final bonding. That same flow chart Mr. Garrett described, do we know uh, what the impact will be uh, three, four years down the road when those bonds uh, start becoming available or due or sold, uh, what the impact that is on our debt service? Um, short answer is is no. We'll have to wait and see where interest rates are at that time and things of that nature. But obviously it will increase it in the short haul. What I would um, remind the council, uh, if you, I'll find the flow chart that everybody's talking about. I have it. I just didn't bring it with me. Um, our debt service requirements start dropping off in 2020. About a $20 million drop in 2020, and then in 2021, it's a 30 or $40 million drop. So it starts dropping precipitously. One thing this government has always done well, long before I was ever here, is, is it has very conservative debt patterns, pays off its debt. Uh, in, in a very expedient basis. And so um, we have capacity starting in 2020, 21. And so when we do the additional bonds, we would structure it where we might pay interest only for a couple of years. And then this is just hypothetically, I'm not committing anything to this. And then sure. start paying the principal, you know, when it, when, the, when, the, when it starts dropping off. Again, always keeping the 20 year maximum and always trying to pay at least half the principal down within a 10 year period. But we have a lot of capacity starting in 21. So that's you just have to sort of massage the debt when you get to that point in time. Thank you. You know, I, I think 
it's important for us to to keep that in the back of our mind because we all have projects in our districts and throughout the city and we want to to pave our roads we want to add open space we want to do all those good things uh, that that are in in the uh, uh, 300 million dollar capital project but but there's a cost to that uh, to our future generations and, and our citizens so um, there, there's one project and I don't know if this is the proper time to talk we are on the capital plan that has bugged me not so much the project itself although it does but the process and and I just want to throw out something that on the record um, my good friend dr. Kelly Hargis the new principal at Hume Fogg will will uh, not like me saying this, but she's a good enough friend uh, coming from Bellevue Middle. Um, but Hume Fogg is, is one of our preeminent high schools. And uh, Hume Fogg fills athletic teams, uh, basketball, volleyball, track, baseball, soccer, and has some very good athletic teams. And we're proposing a nine, is it nine and a half million for the gym at Hume Fogg? Eight, eight and a half, whatever the number is. It's a, 8.9 million, 7.9 million. Um, first of all, we're taking property off the tax rolls that, that is there now. Secondly, we're removing parking in downtown Nashville, which is a premium. And thirdly, we're not solving all of Hume Fogg's athletic needs. So, I talked to school board members and I've talked to board members and I said this is something that, that bothers me that Hume Fogg has athletic department needs whereas the Nashville School of the Arts located a couple miles away on the TPS campus over on Foster has three gyms they have a track they have a baseball and softball field. They have a soccer field. But no athletic teams. They also do performing arts. Whereas if they were in the Hume Fogg building, they could walk to TPAC, they could walk to Skirmerhorn Center. And I understand how politically unpopular it would be to swap campuses uh, that people are used to their buildings and their locations. But from a practical standpoint and from a taxpayer standpoint, we've got to start thinking about these things. We've got to start thinking when we build schools in growing areas like Antioch that we build the capacity and not come back two or three or four years later saying, oh, guess what? We're out of, we're out of classrooms and we've got to add portables. That costs more money on the front. We've, we've got to be smarter as we do these things. So I'm not going to oppose any part of the capital improvement plan. Lord knows the Greenways, the Bellevue Library, there, there are projects in there that I've argued with folks about the, the importance and the need and have fought for that capital money for the years. But, but I'm just going to say it's okay to question items on the capital plan. And it's okay to say there might be a different way and we just can't continue to go to our citizens and ask them to write a check when we make decisions that aren't in the best interest long term. So I just throw that out there. It's something I've talked about for 10 years. Sherry's heard it uh, 25 times, I guess, and probably is tired of hearing it. But uh, it, it's something I just want to publicly state that, that it's okay to question parts of the capital budget and it, it's okay to, to bring forward innovative ideas even when they're unpopular. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Stein, you're recognized. Every example is not a great example. The School for the Arts is on state property. They've been trying to throw the School for the Arts out for the last three years. And if we move out of there for, any, for a split second, the state of Tennessee is going to take that property away from us, which is why there haven't been any improvements to the School for the Arts, because we can't invest in property in a building we don't own. Thank you, Councilman. Council Lady Evans, you're recognized. Mr. Chairman, I have a modest clarification amendment um, on that capital spending plan. Do you want me to wait till tomorrow? 
no, we need to discuss it this evening. Okay, all right. Move the amendment. I have a motion and a second. Council Lady? Um, this is just a modest clarification um, of the technology uh, capital allocation to schools. During um, schools budget hearings and then subsequently um, uh, Mr. Durbin's IT um, uh, budget hearing, we learned that um, schools had developed um, a somewhat redundant infrastructure to our main um, IT backbone here at Metro. Um, and that came kind of as a surprise to me. And I think when we're talking about saving money, one of the first things we need to talk about is making sure that we're taking advantage of economies of scale and we're centralizing activities as much as possible. So I just ask that we amend the language. Um, and just so you know, I did ask the IT people to give me the language, so I knew it would be right. Um, amend the language so that it's um, it, it clarifies that we're authorizing technology expenses for you know non duplicative services. Thank you, Council Lady. Uh, Councilman Stein. I think Lady Evans is being a little modest. I think this is actually fairly revolutionary and is not an uninteresting thought. But I do think that we probably because I think this is treading in a place that council hasn't been before, and I'm not necessarily saying at this point council shouldn't tread there, but I, if, if there's somebody from the schools, I think we probably ought to hear from them if it's possible. Um, and then I'm, I think I know the answer is that we can do this, but Mr. Cooper, this is the legal justification for this in an environment where we have no control on how they spend, my assumption is we have, could have some control here because it's specifically the capital dollars. Right, only the council can, can authorize debt for school projects. The school board doesn't have authority to issue bonds. So unlike their annual operating dollars where once we allocate it, we, we have little authority or no authority in this we might. Um, this is this is very interesting. Um, if somebody is here from schools, Mr. Chair, could we hear from them? Anyone from schools wishing to address that? I'll be happy to respond to um, questions on this issue. There seems to be some confusion about the issue, and I'm not sure that I've been able to explain it adequately to the council, um, the school district is not duplicating services that Metro IT currently provides. We are moving a system off of Metro IT which will eliminate a duplicative service that we have right now. Currently, um, we maintain parallel services for what's called Active Directory and email and the school district is pulling that active directory structure into the school domain because policies with Metro ITS do not allow students and parents on the system. As serving students and parents, we need to have students and parents on our system. We were unable to resolve that so we've worked an agreement with, uh, with uh, Metro ITS where we are uh, bringing up our own Active Directory control system. And I'll, I'll be glad to respond in as non-technical terms as I can because I don't understand all the technology. Thank you. Mr. Chair, let me make a request again. I would, if she wouldn't mind again, would the sponsor please share with us again the rationale behind this? Thanks. Well, there seems to be, um, I guess, and for those of you who followed the budget hearings and also the dialogue and the, the uh, documentation that went back and forth from um, schools and from um, IT services, um, what we're hearing from our IT department is, is yeah, they're, they are developing a, a duplicate system from the one that we have in the central core. And this is the similar discussion that we've had, I think, about uh, JIS. Um, the school seems to disagree with that. Either way, this, this amendment doesn't touch what we've done. 
this just says, okay, going forward, we want to make sure that when we're authorizing technology, we're authorizing technology that's student classroom based and not duplicative of our central system. So it's, I'm not, this is not a retroactive activity, but a going forward thought. Further discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. Oppose no. Yeah, it does pass on a voice vote. Um, and now on the, uh, the bill as amended. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Oppose no. Motion passes. RS 2012-301, sponsors McGuire, approves a second amendment to a grant from $250,000 from the Southeast Energy Efficiency Alliance to the Mayor's Office of Environment and Sustainability to increase residential energy building retrofits. I have a motion, please. A motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-302, sponsors Langster and McGuire, approves a state grant of $6,175,000 to the Metro Health Department for retail food store inspections, reporting, and enforcement. Council Lady Langster? Move for approval. Have a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-303, sponsors Langster and McGuire, uh, approves a sixth amendment to a federal grant to the Metro Board of Health for the continued collection of data on the ambient air concentrations for fine particulate matter by increasing the amount of the grant by $160,000 for a new grant of new grant total of $675,000 and extends the term of the grant through March 31st, 2013. Council Lady Langster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Move for approval, please. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-304, sponsors Langster and McGuire, approves a Sixth Amendment to a federal grant to the Metro Board of Health to achieve established ambient air quality standards by increasing the amount of the grant by $114,572 for a new grant total of $1,188,000. Council Lady Langster. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Move for approval. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-305 sponsors McGuire appropriates $85,026 from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to the Metro Action Commission for continuing support of the Head Start program. Have a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-306, sponsors Moore, Davis, and McGuire, approves a grant of $20,000 from the Metro Development and Housing Agency to the Metro Board of Parks and Recreations to provide swimming lessons and water safety training for children living in neighborhoods around community swimming pools. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-307 sponsors Westerholm, McGuire, and Jernigan, approves a grant of $20,000 from the Metro Development and Housing Agency to the Metro Board of Parks and Recreation for summer enrichment programs for youth. I have a motion and a second. Discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-308 sponsors Matthews, Bennett, and others approves amendments to three agreements with the State Department of Environment and Conservation regarding the maintenance of closed solid waste facilities. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-309 sponsors Gilmore and Hunt. Approves a supplemental licensing agreement with CSX Transportation allowing the Department of Water and Sewage Services to install water lines in the railroad right-of-way near the intersection of Herman Street and 17th Avenue North. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor please say aye. 
Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-310, sponsors Harmon, Hunt, and McGuire, approves an amendment to an agreement between the Tennessee Department of Transportation and Metro Public Works for crosswalks and pedestrian signals at four Harding Place intersections by adding the amount of $168,300 for construction project costs. Have a motion and a second discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-311 sponsors Harmon, Hunt, and others, approves an amendment to an agreement between the State Department of Transportation and Metro Public Works for the construction of sidewalks and bikeway enhancements along Harding Place from Timber Hill Drive to Danby Drive by extending the construction phase deadline from August 25th, 2012 to August 25th, 2013. May I have a motion. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. RS 2012-312 uh, sponsors McGuire, approves a contract between Metro Government and Election Systems and Software LLC for the lease of voting equipment to be used by the Davidson County Election Commission at a rental cost of $381,000. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. We're now at bills on second reading. BL 2012-162 sponsors Todd Duvall and Claiborne amends the health insurance benefits portion of the Metro Code pertaining to term limited members of council by eliminating the subsidized health insurance benefit for members of council after they leave. Um, let's see. I do have a motion. Is there a second? I have a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Uh, he is not, and I, I also. Well, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I thought you were referring to uh, the sponsor. The sponsor is not on the committee, and I actually do not have a letter from the sponsor. Um, so we, uh, Councilman Claiborne. Okay. Um, so, uh, we on the motion of approval, is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. No. Uh, we'll need a show of hands, please. All those in favor of uh, BL 2012-162, please raise your hand. Have, Councilman. Um, and all those opposed? Two, four, three against, and ten not voting. Two, four, three against, ten not voting. Motion fails. Um, BL 2012-165, sponsors Domini, Stites, and others. Approves a lease agreement between Nashville Soccer LLC and the Metro Board of Parks and Recreation for the development and maintenance of a soccer complex. May I have a motion, please? And a second. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2012 166, sponsors Langster and McGuire and Hunt. Approves a participation agreement between Metro Government and Southern Land Company to repair approximately 50 linear feet of an 18-inch sewer main and to install one manhole near 2300 Elliston Place at a cost of up to $22,000. Council Lady Langster. Move for approval, sir. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. BL 2012-167, sponsors Langster, McGuire, and Hunt, approves a participation agreement between Metro Government and 40th Avenue Church of Christ for the construction of approximately 2,300 feet of a 12-inch water main within the 40th Avenue North right-of-way from Charlotte Avenue to Catherine Johnson Parkway at a cost of $20,000. Council Lady Langster. Move for approval, please. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, no. Motion passes. That concludes our agenda. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.